the United States is militarizing Taiwan and playing dangerous provocations with China in Taiwan. All you have to do is a simple Google search. All I did, and I'll show you it, all I did was say, was type in the words, I believe it was Taiwan US weapons. Other than three words, not a very specific search. The first thing that comes up is from a Defense Department media site, the Defense News, a literal Pentagon outlet. Documents reveal a $14 billion backlog in U.S. defense transfers to Taiwan. So there's a it, there's so much going to Taiwan, so many weapons going to Taiwan, that there is a $14 billion backlog that hasn't even been fulfilled yet. That is how just egregious and how expansive the U.S.'s aims are. And then you can just scroll down to the next article. In 2019, State Department authorized $2.2 billion in sales of weapons to Taiwan that included blah, 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 tanks and all that. So you can go to the Wikipedia and see the whole list of arms sales to Taiwan. But, you know, every headline, April 6th, U.S. approves $95 million worth of Patriot weapons in support for Taiwan. February 8, 2022, U.S. approves $100 million arms sales to Taiwan. So it goes on and on and on. On <laughs> Here we go again. February 8th again. Okay, so that's the same $100 million. But this is something that happens every year. Every year, each U.S. president commits somewhere between a half a billion dollars to billions of dollars in arms sales. Uh, Trump, I think it was somewhere uh, above $5 billion U.S. dollars worth of arms sales. So that's how extensive it is. That, that's all you need to do is a simple Google search. There's a backlog of weapons ready to go to Taiwan worth $14 billion. Right? So, we were, so a lot of people went up in arms about the transfer $40 billion U.S. dollars in one kind of sitting, right? In, in one piece of legislation that the Democrats passed wholesale without any sort of conflict, right? They just did it. They all approved it. This has been happening with Taiwan every single year leading up to very similar amounts of expenditures. Of course, there has not been a single arms transfer to that degree because the United States has had to take a position of strategic ambiguity, unlike with Russia and Ukraine, where the U.S.'s role is obviously to fortify Ukraine, to obviously to prolong the war antagonistically against Russia, right? The U.S. is on the opposing side. The U.S. has made it very clear. It is not on the side of peace. It's not on the side of negotiations or neutrality. No, it's on the side of militarizing Ukraine to the point where it can prolong the war. And of course, 40 billion worth of military weaponry, which isn't all old weapons anymore, according to our friend Scott Ritter. It's actually a lot of new weaponry, which can, right, uh, can kind of sustain warfare. The weapons to Taiwan are a little different, but nonetheless, it is a major provocation in Joe Biden stating that he is committed to right, a military conflict with China over Taiwan should the correct circumstances warrant it is cause for concern. And there's another, the last piece on this that I want to say is that there was another sort of indication within this month that should give us pause about the U.S.'s intentions, that the U.S. is not in good faith following the one China policy, is seeking to use Taiwan as a launch pad for war with China, and it can, does not get any clearer. And I've, I've shown you other sources, right, from the RAND Corporation, et cetera, where the conversation about war with China is actually quite active, right, within the Pentagon, within the U.S. foreign policy establishment. This isn't something that's just joked about. It's not something that's just talked about flippantly. No, it's talked about very seriously. And recently, there was uh, May 16th on Meet the Press. There was an event, and I'm not going to play you the clip because honestly, I'm not putting this filth on my YouTube. But I will show you at least that it happened in our friend Caitlin Johnstone, good anti-war independent journalist. She 
wrote about it and she reported right and this was on may 15th actually so on may 15th on meet the press she says that the pentagon funded think tank stimulates war with china on nbc nbc's meet the press just aired a freakish segment which the influential narrative management firm center for a new american security ran war games simulating a hot war with china and as you see here it's over taiwan right they're talking about a possible conflict with china so that aired on nbc's meet the press a literal war game simulation from a pentagon funded think tank the center for a new american security so this came just a little less than of two weeks before the Biden administration made their latest comments he made his latest comments on why the how the united states would support taiwan militarily and would intervene directly should there be a war between uh, China and Taiwan over the whole issue of reunification. Now, let me show you just what Caitlin Johnstone means when she is talking about Center for New American Security. So Center for New American Security, I don't know if you all uh, know, I, I wrote about this for CGTN. People like Michael Gordon, Peter Sanger, there are really lucrative journalists who actually work as fellows for this uh, think tank. And Michael Gordon, you may remember, and I think it was 2002, where he actually co-authored the article which stated in the New York Times that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. It was literally the intelligence agencies using the New York Times as its conduit to promote this narrative and build the case for the US's invasion and it worked. And so that who is who Michael Gordon is, and that is who the Center for New American Security is. They are literally, as Caitlin Johnson said, narrative management for the Pentagon and for the war machine. So here is its supporters. So if you look here, you can just write to the website, just go to their about and look at their supporters. And so this is from 2020 to 2021. And you can see who the top $500,000 and above. Okay, so we don't actually know how much, but we do know that it's $500,000 and above coming from Northrop Grumman Systems Corporation, one of the top five military contractors on this planet, and the U.S. Department of Defense, and then all the other kind of um, offshoots there of uh, the DOD, the Pentagon. So that is who this firm is, uh, that is who is funding this firm, this uh, think tank. And so war game simulations on it meet the press sounds like an effort to normalize war with China over this issue of Taiwan. It's very dangerous. Uh, I'll probably have somebody on this show soon, as soon as I can, to talk about the politics of Taiwan and give a better and more robust history. But what you really need to know right now is that the United States is arming Taiwan to the teeth as best that it can and as much as it wants in order to provoke China. And then the Biden administration is showing its hand saying that, yeah, no strategic ambiguity and following the one China policy. That's not really the case, right? What we're seeing is an escalation in not just a new cold war, but the rudiments of what comes beyond a new cold war, right? An actual hot war, which if you think that the Russia Ukraine conflict has been a monumental watershed moment in a very dangerous escalation instigated by the United States. Just wait until what would happen when it comes to Taiwan and when it comes to China, because that kind of conflict and U.S. involvement in it would be absolutely disastrous to by many more degrees, many more degrees, because China's role economically, uh, the U.S.'s uh, 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 view of China, all of these factors, right, laying at the roots of this. The U.S., right, is building up. And I think the U.S. is seeing, the U.S. is seeing Russia and Ukraine not just as a one-pronged war. It is seeing it as a two-way war, right, a multi uh, sort of targeted war. It's not just that Russia. It's not just let's capsize Russia's economy. Let's destroy Russia. Let's try to weaken its government. 
it's also about China. That's why they keep talking about Taiwan and China in relationship to this conflict, because they want to build up toward the possibilities of a war with China, no matter how suicidal that is. And that's because of the forces behind the Center for New American Security. I had Michael Hudson on and he said Wall Street was not briefed about the United States' role and how it would instigate this Ukraine crisis. It was not briefed on the economic measures, the economic warfare that it would take. And we should understand the U.S.'s behavior toward China as very similar, right? The economic impact of a war with China would be so monumental that it would be hard to believe that a lot of the forces within the capitalist class would just outright support it. A lot of forces on Wall Street, not to be confused with Wall Street being in collusion, this isn't Matt Stoller's strange, unverified, completely unreasonable and uh, a factless conclusion that Wall Street and China are in cahoots. No, this is just Wall Street wanting to protect investments around the world, wanting a stable, relatively stable economic economic landscape. Wall Street has no problems with wars. It's when those wars start to affect the global economy in a way that will bounce back at Wall Street. That is when Wall Street and these investors are going to oppose it, right? Or at least they're not going to just jump on board. They're going to hedge their bets. They're going to uh, look at what is the best possible scenario for them and for their super profits. That doesn't make them heroes. It just means that China's role in the global economy is so of a, is of such import that it is hard to believe that a lot of forces seeking to continue their onslaught of super exploitation on the planet are just going to go wholesale in on a hot war with China because. Well, a hot war with China not only could mean annihilation of humanity through nuclear exchange, but it could also mean an economic collapse that Wall Street can't really get out of, right? Wall Street doesn't want a revolution on its hands, right? It doesn't want some kind of uh, uprising on its hands. It doesn't want, it doesn't even want what's happening right now. It doesn't want this incredible inflation. It doesn't want this uh, stagnation that is being caused and this move toward collapse that's being caused with the Russia-Ukraine crisis. It doesn't want that because that's not good for, as Michael Hudson said again, right, because I just interviewed him, right? it's not good for the rentier class. They want to make profits in their sleep. They don't, they don't want to be awake wondering if a war is going to uh, destroy all of their financialized investments because they're just, there just isn't a terrain to, to make them anymore. So in this also, we have to understand capitalism as a contradiction. This also should be factored in. This doesn't mean that Wall Street's for peace. This doesn't mean that Wall Street is in coots with China. Actually, Wall Street is fueling the military industrial complex, which is driving this. Wall Street is making heavy investments, heavy bets on the military industrial complex. And Wall Street has a very negative view of China. Just look at what George Soros, people like George Soros say. Very negative opinion on China. They would love to see China be embattled in some kind of conflict, just not one that will affect them. So that's the key difference here between Wall Street and cahoots with China, that ridiculous argument, versus the real political and economic landscape that we live in, which requires a dialectical anal materialist analysis of the situation, which points to a very contradictory, a very problematic kind of scenario uh, for the economic forces of capitalism and capital and finance capital. But nonetheless, that's what's happening with Taiwan. That's the stakes. That's where we're at. It's a very dangerous situation. And we have to be uh, really aware of this and be sure to oppose it and cover it with just as much fervor as the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Everyone is on board with the Russia-Ukraine crisis. And we, we should be following it. It's one of the most important moments in the world situation right now so of course i'm not saying cover it less but if there's a neglect of this other side if there's a neglect of this huge portion of the overall puzzle this huge piece of the overall puzzle that is imperialism then we're doing a disservice and i've noticed i don't know about you all but i've noticed that china has gone on the back burner as if the united states is not building up the case for war 
And as I've shown, they really are building up the case for war and they're really seeking to provoke China.